Hello everybody and welcome to some exciting first round action of Alien Wars, our latest tournament here in Cinefix. This is going to be a good one. Yeah, I, I mean, I think. It's really up to you If anyone guys. knows who either of these people it's are. It's really up to you guys. On my left, <laughs> Mark Petro has Thomas Jerome Newton from The Man Who Fell to Earth. And on my right, Michael Truly, Zaphod Beeblebrooks from yes. A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. You may remember from last time, it's going to work exactly the same as Robot Wars. We got two minutes for opening arguments. You'll each have a minute of rebuttal, and then you'll have some time for final thoughts. Are you ready? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. I flipped a coin, and you can't prove that I didn't. Mm -hmm. Truly, you're going to go first. Absolutely not. You're refusing to go first. I'm refusing to go first. Mark. Unless you can point out that coin. Mark, Wait, you're so going to go he's first. He's deferring. That means I get to call. I, look, I make the rules here. You're going first. Oh, okay. Not football okay. rules. All right, Mark. Are you ready? Two minutes starting right now. Go. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about Thomas Jerome Newton for a moment. Uh, this is a character from the documentary uh, The Man Who Fell to Earth. Uh, it's about Bowie's early years before he became famous, right? This is just the most interesting capturing of a character ever on film. Uh, he's so inherently alien. Uh, his performance even, like what he does, how he moves, it's, it, it really feels the whole movie like he is an alien wearing human clothes. We get this throughout the movie, the way he moves, the numerous love scenes where he's not really making love and he's more just almost doing an autopsy on these people. He is so alien that uh, his motivations, actually, as a character in this movie, are inhuman. Uh, basically, to give a rundown for uh, those of you who might have skimmed through any the movie. Any of us, for everyone. Uh, any of us who might have missed this movie. <laughs> sat and stared at the screen, wondering what was going on. His, his intention is he he's, wants to get water back to his home planet. That's... His intention seems pretty human. His methodology, though, uh, is basically he has the tech, he knows in his head the technology to get all this water back to his home planet. And instead of him sitting there building it, he just files patents and licenses out the patents for all the technology, and he sits and waits for this technology to get built in society. He also generally has this ability to uh, sort of shift and sift through the folds of time and space. Uh, however, humanity brings him down and uh, he, alcohol consumption reduces his abilities and distracts him from everything. Now, as an alien, as an alien intention on Earth, that is just stunning in its portrayal. I heard autopsy sex. Yeah, that's definitely. I heard a I lot of other that. things, but I heard autopsy. That's that was a winner for autopsy. Yeah. Yeah. We're <laughs> learning a lot about Mark today. <laughs> Truly, your opening arguments. Two minutes starting right now. Go. Look, uh, thank you for having me here, but I, I would like to say it's 100% ridiculous that I should be here to defend Zephod Beeblebrox, president of the galaxy, without an official impeachment. Though I would like to say that impeaching him would be entirely within the rights of everyone involved as he is a known spaceship thief who used the office of the president to abscond with the starship part of gold and then swing by Earth to pick up a, you know, a bit of dirty leg by asking ladies if they'd like to see said spaceship. Which we can all agree is 10 out of 10 for style, but minus several million for good thinking, yeah? Okay, incidentally, he survived the total perspective vortex, which is supposed to show you how small you are in the galaxy. And he's totally unfazed by it. Yeah, you can say it's because Zarni Woop created an alternate universe, but I say it's because he is the ultimate embodiment of Zen and solipsism. He knows there is none but the self, and that only the self can be proven to exist. Thomas Jerome Newton can't even sit in a cafe without succumbing to his alcoholism. Look, Zaphod's whole mission is to discover the ultimate question to life, the universe, and everything, and he locked half of his brain away to do it. So to sum up, he's just this guy, you know, but he's been described as the best bang since the big one, he's an accomplished mixologist, and he's one hoopy fruit, which in other parts of the galaxy is a real nice compliment. So he, to sum up, he's really the alien equivalent of the dude from The Big Lebowski, simple men with simple pleasures who move at their own pace and refuse to succumb to the chaotic machinations of life around them. All right, time for rebuttal. Mark, you ready? You have one minute. Now we have to clarify here. This is movie wars. We can't always pull reference from the books. 
uh, there, we, we have one reference of Zaphod, and that's the movie uh, to pull from. Um, so a couple things. So yeah, he was uh, the center point of an electronically synthesized universe, which helped him survive that vortex thing. That in and of itself is a cause to question whether or not he is truly alien. I mean, if he is the center of a universe, he is the most important thing of that universe, everything else outside of him ought to be uh, decreasing in normalcy. After all, his Dr. Digi say he is just this guy, you know. So he would be the least alien thing in this universe if we were going by the books. However, we're not. We're going by the movie version, of, and he's portrayed as a satirical look at celebrity and leadership, not an alien. Look, Thomas Jerome Newton is just a bald David Bowie with cat eyes and no music. At least mine has two heads and a third arm. Also, I get why you like the movie. It's about a sexually active androgynous spaceman who shows up from outer space and shows a bunch of math formulas around. But there's literally a scene with him and another woman and they're both pale and naked and you cannot tell which is which. Also, as an alien, Thomas likes any of the aspects that even make David Bowie remotely interesting. I would put forth that David Bowie is himself more alien than the character he plays, and therefore Thomas Jerome Newton should be voted out of this bracket because, you know, even the, he, he can't even best the man who plays him. He has a better mission, a philosophical mission. Thomas Jerome Newton fell to Earth so that he can take water back to his planet, like some sort of lazy trucker, but he can't even be bothered to get off his ass and do it. He has to wait for mankind to do it. When Zaphod is on a philosophical mission to benefit everyone in the galaxy, and he'll lock half his brain away to do that. All right. Final thoughts are untimed, but I'll, you know, I'll yell at you if you do something wrong. Mark, go ahead. Again, we're looking at the movie versions here. Now, I would admit, I would fully admit, I would lay down and, and give on this it to table. You. Lay down lay on down, this table. On this table. Push that. Lay down and give this to you if we're going by the book version. But we're going by the movie version, not even the TV miniseries version of Zaphod. Most of the aspects that you cite that make him alien, the two heads, three arms, they're not actually because he is alien. They are just simply because of his very human motivations uh, to one-up people. That's not necessarily alien, that's just futuristic. As a futuristic person, he's fantastic, but the movie version just does not portray him in the alien manner that he is portrayed in the book. He has a second head under his other head. Right. And he has a third but arm that he decided to grow. None of those are aspects of, the, of his alien nature. A human could have done that. Whereas Thomas Jerome Newton, when photographed, looks alien. He, his eyes are, when he takes off his human contacts, they are alien. He is a reptilian Yeah, but I can get contacts alien. that look like cat eyes. Yeah, but they're not your natural eyes. But Thomas Jerome Newton... <laughs> so you're Newton, saying that... I could get a second head put under my other head, but I couldn't get eyes that look like a cat. So I would no, argue, no, no, no. if I can get a yeah, second head put underneath your... this one, I can get cat eyes put in my head. Okay, fine. You can, <laughs> you can do that, but that's not your natural state. You can make yourself look more alien like Zaphod did, or you can just naturally be alien like David Bowie is in real life. Look, it... David Bowie said he was doing 10 grams of cocaine a day while he was filming The Man Who Fell to Earth, and he doesn't even remember filming it, which I... It, 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 that's why his character doesn't belong on the bracket. He's utterly forgettable, even to the man who played it. Furthermore, I'd like to cite your cackling glee at seeing me watch this god-awful movie and accuse you <laughs> of attempting to pick an alien solely to troll the bracket. And I hope the voters see what I you're doing and vote to stop it. Troll the bracket. I'm going to say that now. This is a critically acclaimed movie. It's part of the Criterion Collection. Oh, there's a lot of garbage. There's some the real garbage collection. In there. All right, everybody, down below there will be one comment that says, Vote here if that guy David Bowie played a wins. And then there's another comment that says, Vote here if Zaphod wins. Go find those comments. Like whichever one you think deserves to win. And make sure to check out our other contest that's going on right now. It's the Xenomorphs versus Mr. Spock. Vote in that one as well. Uh, and then come back next time for uh, scintillating first round action of Alien Wars. A lot of boobs in The Man Who Fell to Earth. Look, we're not expecting that. Yeah, a lot of boobs. A lot. Yeah. And he looks like Tilda Swinton the whole time. <laughs> <laughs>